folks, I don't want to toot our horns too much, the horns of myself and this whole community, but we were bang on correct yet again. So write toot in the comments if you were right on this one, because what we've been saying for a long time now is there are two groups of people that are going to take Donald Trump down ultimately, and it's one, Donald Trump himself, and two, his cronies, both on purpose in some cases as they flip and accidentally in others because they're too darn stupid to even protect Trump and themselves if they wanted to. And this has led to a shocking late night document discovery in Jersey as Jack Smith and police have made a shocking document discovery based on the words of a Trump crony. At the same time, new footage new footage of Trump and his cronies nails him and it's all connected. So we're going to build this hit the like and subscribe button as we were proven right yet again, guys. And we start with the new video evidence because there's new documents that have been found stolen, classified documents that have been found by Jack and Trump sweating over that, but also new footage. And it's of new footage of a Trump crony admitting again before at a key juncture that he and Trump and all of them lost the election. By Trump and some of his allies who did try to overthrow the election results, that they really believe Trump won, even if delusionally that it was their actual belief. Yet, in the new video, here is Stone on January 6th, casually referring to the fact that Donald Trump lost, as he refers to they, the Trump campaign officials. It's why they lost. They don't know what they're doing. It's why they lost. They don't know what they're doing. Well, so still a convict hoping for a full pardon from then outgoing President Trump. He wanted as well the larger role in what was becoming that post loss havoc. Now, the next new clip we have for you is from before the actual voting, October 30th, when there were many signs that Trump could lose. There were people saying he was likely going to lose. You'll notice in what we're about to play for you, Stone seems almost resigned to that. He puts the idea of the incumbent president being reelected as a more like a, a distant possibility. And he appears to be mulling some kind of independent action, which would overlap with what we showed you recently, the elector plot that he would push days later. I've been really focused on trying to help Donald win this election, which, you know, and I'm doing that unofficially and uh, and informally because his campaign is so extraordinarily f***ed up. So to, go, so to go back to your question, will he win? I don't know. Can he win? It's possible. I, I really expect a 2000-like result with a long, drawn-out squabble over who won. This is not a campaign structured for a dogfight, and that's what we have now. So, so independent action is required, you know? Independent action is required. That is basically Roger Stone telling somebody what he thinks it might take. The reference to 2000 is striking. Stone was known as well for his involvement in what was sometimes called the Brooks Brothers riot, the efforts in Florida. But the big difference was 2000, whatever you think about it, did come down to one state. Nobody disagrees about that. And then contesting the results in one state of Florida, which meant if Florida went one way or the other, the whole thing, of course, would go back and forth to the different opposing candidates. 2020 proved to be nothing like that. Trump lost by three states. He lost badly. He lost in a way that the courts and the Supreme Court never took those appeals. So what Stone was saying right there was a version of what they hoped to create, not that it existed, but the elector plot, getting state legislatures involved, lying about fraud in ways that other people have now been indicted for. All of that was to create a fraudulent effort to make it seem like 2000. And the footage you're seeing was provided to the beat by the filmmakers who made A Storm Foretold. And that film, that project, is not currently available in the U.S. Now, I want to remind you, Stone took the fifth when he was interviewed by the Jan 6 committee. But this and the other footage and reporting does shed more light on a story that he through his legal rights, refused to tell Congress when it was investigating this. He is Trump's longest serving advisor. He is a convicted felon. He so you can see that's essential. It's absolutely essential 
And again, these sorts of things matter when some of these people are co-defendants for Trump with Trump or their witnesses in the case or they have dirt or they're at risk of becoming a co-defendant. And, you know, this is something being held over their head. What you've had all along from these Trumpers behind the scenes is that certainly after the election, but even in some cases before we saw Roger last week, we played a clip of this guy last week. It was made crystal clear that they knew they lost and that even before they officially, officially lost before the news networks even called it for Joe Biden, because, you know, it took them a few days. It was clear probably a day before they called it that it was moving in that direction. But, you know, in an abundance of caution, they waited. Um, but in, in that interval, they were already planning the big lie and already planning the coup. And that clip nails it. And what this one shows, and this applies to Trump and his team as well, and it's directly uh, connected to the shocking document discovery tonight. But So stick around for that. But this demonstrates how they're all so dumb for recording themselves. So Ari, when you're planning a coup, it's usually not the best idea to have a camera crew around recording it. Um, this footage is likely going to spell real trouble for Roger Stone and as well, importantly, for Donald Trump. And it starts with, you know, the prior footage going all the way back to the beginning of November that you've already showed. But this clip that you just showed uh, on January 6th, Roger Stone saying he did nothing wrong. I mean, for a guy who claims to be doing nothing wrong, he certainly hasn't acted like someone with nothing to hide. I mean, innocent people don't go seeking preemptive pardons and plead the Fifth Amendment as he did uh, before the January 6th committee when questioned about their actions. I mean, I live in D.C. and I happen to be in town when the events of January 6th happened. At no point did I think, oh, I better get out of town and pack my bags and request call up the president and seek a pardon. Those are not the actions of a guy who genuinely believes he did nothing wrong. What do you see in the way that he has navigated, and it got him in trouble in the Mueller probe as well, he hypes, he does bluster, um, unlike, as you say, some more perhaps career uh, potential criminals, um, there's a propaganda and spin element to it. And yet, on the other hand, um, he is, we learn, talking to insiders about the elector plot. He is consorting with some of the militias. So there's a, there's a hype to it, and then there's also appears to be a there there. Absolutely. And I wouldn't say that the hype is any sort of excuse. I mean, he tried that hype last time around. Remember, Roger Stone is a convicted seven times felon. He was convicted of witness tampering, convicted of obstruction of congressional investigation, five different counts of false statements to Congress. The jury took just seven hours to convict him, Ari, uh, even with his hype defense. And the only reason Stone isn't in jail is because Bill, because uh, because uh, Donald Trump pardoned him. And so, you know, I think the kind of uh, things that he was directing, he is kind of a bridge between the coupers, the people who were actually invading the Capitol, and the coup plotters and the inner circle of the White House. Um, you know, just to take one example, the footage you showed last week, uh, two days before the election, Roger Stone has a set play developed to say that there's doubt about the election. And now the phony lawyers have to come in and say that, you know, state legislatures can appoint electors themselves, which is a cockamamie theory that I just argued to the Supreme Court and was resoundingly rejected six to two. But, you know, apart from the legal. You know, it's like there's a classic thing in The Simpsons, right in the comments, if you remember this, where the, the bullies in the show were saying something along the lines of, man, filming this crime spree was the best idea we ever had, of course, and they're all basically just proving themselves guilty of the crimes they're committing. And that's what's happening here. They're basically planning a coup, realizing it went sideways and then escaping out of the town. But more than that, this connects to Trump. And remember... Donald Trump did something quite similar. It's not as damning as this necessarily. But remember, the entire Trump family basically did a documentary in and around J6. I think it was Jared's dumb idea. But there's a whole bunch of footage of them on before and around J6 and all of that. You know, which incriminates them as well, because they're all too stupid to understand that eventually, whether it was the public or the courts or whoever, people were going to see this video. And this, that, so that's the accidental crony screwing Trump. Here's the one on purpose. As this clip notes, folks like Mark Meadows 
or who are uh, 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 co-defendants in Georgia aren't federally because they played ball federally. And this notes how all of these people, again, whether on purpose or by accident, are going to convict them. And Mark is essential to the document discovery tonight. We are back with John Carl, Glenn Kirshner, and David Jolly. Glenn, I, I can see your face. Our viewers can see it. And I, I could see all your thought bubbles. I want to hear all of them. Oh, yeah, I have, I have quite a few, Nicole. Uh, f first of all, I, I am so impressed when I hear evidence of Mark Meadows saying things that pretty dramatically undercut Donald Trump's claims regarding the classified documents, like he telepathically declassified them with his mind, like they were automatically declassified when he took them from the White House. When you have his own chief of staff, a fellow Republican, Mark Meadows, completely, you know, eviscerate those claims. You also have Mike Pence in his own mealy mouth way going a long way to also undercut those claims. You know, once these cases are in trial, Nicole, Donald Trump will be convicted by a chorus of Republican voices. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think back to the January 6th House Select Committee. You know, I think there was nary a Democrat that we saw testify. So once these cases are in trial proper, I do maintain it's going to kind of be like shooting fish in a barrel. Donald Trump will not have a compelling defense. It, it also takes me back to when I was prosecuting gang cases. If I was trying gang number one and I would call witnesses from gang number two, a rival gang, to testify against gang number one, there was obviously a built-in line of cross-examination for bias, for prejudice, because, of course, you're sponsoring the testimony of the enemies of the defendant. It doesn't mean they're lying, but it puts their credibility instantly in question. Well, Donald Trump's own gang members from the GOP are going to be the ones presenting the most sharply incriminating information against Donald Trump. So, you know, these cases are quite strong. The other thing that I'm really interested to figure out, because it's a stone cold mystery right now. What is Mark Meadows status? Because once we saw mm. that he was neither an indicted defendant in the D.C. indictment that was handed down, nor was he one of those six unnamed co-conspirators. But I think we know who five of the six are and none of them are Mark Meadows. That led to the reasonable in inference, indeed, the strong inference that Meadows is cooperating. That seems to be bolstered and supported by all of the incriminating things that have come to our attention one way or another. So he said a bunch of things contradicting Donald Trump's statements, contradicting Donald Trump's arguments, contradicting his philosophy, basically screwing Trump. And I don't know if that's going to save him in Georgia. I have no clue, but it's certainly as of now saved him federally. It has. He's not he's not indicted. And I don't know if he will be, even though he played a, a really ugly role on J6. And I think, honestly, he probably deserves some punishment. But if he gave Jack enough essential info, that's the dirty side of justice. Right. Like, let's be clear. It's the dirty side of justice. You got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. And maybe Mark Meadows was one of the last eggs you needed to crack to convict Donald Trump. Maybe it was worth it. But f but this is one of the reasons and Mark was essential in pointing out Donald Trump lying about documents as well. And what Mark revealed, and this is coming from right wing sources as well, is that Donald Trump was hiding documents on his couch and Jack used that information to seize in and grab more documents. Mark is saying that Donald Trump was not just stealing the documents for some principled thing. But he was being careless with them. And he personally saw Donald Trump leave stolen classified documents in, on his couch at Bedminster and places like that. So you got Roger nailing him accidentally with his stupid documentary. And you got Mark nailing him on purpose to save himself. But both achieved the same objective.